And we are counting down to the NFL Draft. It is officially less than a week away. The Jaguars are going to have a busy three-day period. Draft starts on Thursday, goes all the way until Saturday. This time next week, we're going to be talking about those Jaguars draft picks and hopefully talking about how they were the right picks and not the wrong picks. Uh, we'll see. You know, the Jaguars do have a rough draft history. We'll see if this year can be a, a good page in what has otherwise been a rough book. But the Jaguars have gotten back to work and they are going through those voluntary workouts. The team is back in the building. And to get us ready for the draft, we had to bring in 1010 XL's Frank Frangie, who was so kind to hang out with us on a Sunday night. Frank, uh, I love the draft. I always have been a big draft Nick. Uh, one of my kind of favorite times of the year, but you know what it also is? Kind of a start to football, at least a little bit, the off-season program for all these teams. It's kind of like that bright spot in the middle of a long off-season. Yeah, I love it too. I love recruiting in college football. I love the draft with the NFL. But I will tell you, we've talked about it so much. Now I'm eager to see what happens. Uh, I think the Jags did a very good job in free agency. I've been, I've been open about that with you and others. I like where they are now. They're about five or six, seven players away now from having their roster they're going to play with. And we all have some ideas of what they're going to do. But I'm like you. The draft, this is a fun week. Draft week is a fun week for all NFL fans and certainly for Jaguar fans. All right. Before we hit the page and hit the button for the NFL draft, I'm going to throw my mock draft at you in a second, Frank. All right. Uh, before we get to that, I want to talk a little bit about Trevor Lawrence. So those voluntary workouts started this week. Trevor Lawrence, one of the guys in the building. Of course, this is... Trevor Lawrence's fourth year in the NFL. The team has the question of if they want to pick up that fifth-year <clears> option. They got to do that by May second, uh, I believe it is. And if not, you try and work out that long-term deal. Trevor said that look, he's not worried about getting a long-term deal, but he'd love if a long-term deal is done. And Trent Baalke said that he has been in touch with Trevor's people, so that's a good sign. Yeah, there's no question. And listen, I, I said this to you before. I don't want to say it's an overrated story because Trevor Lawrence might be the most important player to ever play here before it's over. He's on the ballot now. But there's no doubt that he's going to be here. Whether that deal gets done now, whether that deal gets done in a year, uh, there's no doubt. This is a guy that's going to be here, Jamal, for the next five, six, eight, ten years. There's no, there's nothing that's going to happen, barring injury or something catastrophic, there's nothing that's going to keep him from being here. He's the franchise quarterback. Everybody knows that. He wants to play better than he did last year. He wants to stay healthier than he did. So we can talk a lot about the possibility of the extension, as both Trent and Trevor did in their availabilities in the last week or so. But the guy's going to be here. He's going to be the Jaguar quarterback, barring something unforeseen from an injury standpoint, for a long, long time. I have no doubt in my mind about that. All right, so let's flip the page to the NFL draft. Frank, uh, I'm going to throw my mock at you. So the, the two okay. positions that a lot of us have been debating is whether or not to give Ryan Nielsen a new toy on the defense or to help the guy you were just talking about, Trevor Lawrence, and get him a new wide receiver with the Jaguars' first pick at 17. So that's been the big debate. Uh, I think a lot of people fall in one camp or the other. With uh, my first pick, I went for the defense. Uh, Terry on Arnold, Quinion Mitchell were both off the board, Frank. I ended up going with the Clemson cornerback, Nate Wiggins. Sticky, he's 6'1", he's got some wheels to him. The one red flag that people don't like is that, that 173 pound mark. He is a little light for an NFL corner, but the guy plays tough, he has ball skills, he has all the tools to succeed in that press man defense that Ryan Nielsen wants to run here in Jacksonville. Yeah, I like it, Jamal. My get if Arnold and Mitchell are off the board, as you suggest, then I think Wiggins makes all the sense in the world here. He's a good player. I do think, and, and Trent Baalke spoke this past week, and he mentioned Need a bunch. You did get the impression that Need will be in play here, and Need tends to be in play when you have a good team. When you don't have a good team, just get as many good players as you can because you're building. When you've got a good team, you got to fill in the holes that remain. And I think the Jags have a good team. So I think cornerback makes sense here. If Arnold and Mitchell aren't there, I think Wiggins makes plenty of sense. I like it. I like your start. All right. Frank didn't rip it up just yet. All right. Let's look at the second round pick here. So I did go for getting Trevor Lawrence a big wide receiver. And it's a guy that's not far from here right now at 48 in the second round. I went with Keon Coleman. So he's the FSU wide receiver, 6'3", 213 pounds. Keon didn't run the 40-yard dash you wanted at the combine that anybody wanted to see from him, but the guy can flat out play. I think we saw that. We talked about it all during college football season. Keon Coleman was a star for the Seminoles and can come to Jacksonville and be that top shelf kind of guy. Maybe replace the role of uh, Marvin Jones we saw a couple of years ago that we lost or the Jaguars lost when Marvin Jones moved on. He's a really good player, and I love watching him. He can return punch, too. He's got great hands. He's a possession guy. 
The one question I would have, Jamal, is he's an awful lot like Gabe Davis. Same size, same body structure, same speed, a high point guy. I wonder if you sign Gabe Davis and then go draft a guy just like him. But but I would be totally okay with it. I think I think he's a really good player. And I think he can do a lot of things for you. You want guys that can make it. You want stars. The one thing the Jags haven't had enough of are stars. And I think Keon Coleman is going to be a star. So I think he's going to be a good player. And I can live with it all day long, Jamal. The only question I would have is he's very much like, to me, he's very much like Gabe Davis. And would you be bringing in two guys that are similar? I wouldn't be surprised. My guess would be the receiver they bring in early in the draft, and I think they will, might be more of a stretch the field guy. But I could live with Keon Coleman all day long. I really could. Let me throw a comparison at you for Keon. And let me know what you think here. He has like shades of Allen Robinson to his game for me. Like a 6'3 yep. guy who can kind of make folks miss, just a, just a little slithery out there. You mentioned him as a punt returner. Uh, just shades of that Allen Robinson game. Am I, I am think I he's very, that? yeah, I think he's very Allen Robinson. I think that's a very good comp. I really do. He's going to be a good player, Jamal. He's going to be a very good player in the NFL. Again, my only question would be, did they already go get him when they went and got Gabe Davis? who's very similar, but we'll see. Certainly they need a receiver in the draft. Nobody questions that. All right, let's look at the rest of that mock draft. So I did the whole seven rounds, but I'm not going to make you suffer through all seven pick by pick. But in the third round, I went and got a little bit of defensive line help. How about Michael Hall Jr. from Ohio State? Then uh, we went offensive line, offensive tackle, Caden Wallace from Penn State. He's the other Penn State tackle in this year's draft. Got a little edge help a little bit later on at 116. Brennan Jackson got another corner. DeMar DeCameron Richardson from Mississippi State, crazy athlete. Double dipped on the O-line at Tapple. Aneem Donkwa is a guy that, I mean, he is huge, Frank. I mean, this dude is a giant on the football field, played college football at Howard, uh, still needs time to develop. That's why he's such a late draft pick, but you can't teach the size. And then that last pick for the Jaguars, I said they land Tyler Owens from Texas Tech. He tested as the most athletic safety at the NFL Combine this year. You can't go wrong with drafting large athletes that you know their floor is going to be as a standout special teamer late in the draft. I like your mock. You see, everybody in the world's got a mock. My neighbor Walt's got a mock. Everyone's got a mock, right? Uh, I think your mock is really good. The important thing is we don't know how it's going to fall. You don't know where players are going to be, Jamal. What you do know is the areas they need to address. I think you hit them all. We know they've got to address corner early on. We know they, we, we believe they will address wide receiver early on. We know edge and offensive line is, is of significance. And, and I agree with you, maybe offensive line in volume. So I think you hit, those are the areas they've got to hit. And I think you hit them all. You never know how the board's going to fall. The board talks to you, like all the GMs like to say. And the board makes you change direction in terms of specific players. The cornerback, wide receiver, edge, offensive line, offensive line and volume. I don't think there's any doubt that's where they're going to go. You, you've been taking notes from Trent Baalke there. Let the board speak to you, see what's there. Uh, one thing that, that I think the board could speak, and I want to get your take on this before we let you go. So I mentioned Terrion Arnold and Quinion Mitchell both possibly being off the board. I just have a gut feeling they'll both be gone from 17. A lot of the, the mocks we see out there have the feeling that they'll both be gone. The board could fall where the best player available is an offensive lineman. <laughs> Now, the problem if you draft an offensive lineman is more than likely a person that pick wouldn't start this year. Right. How upset would you be if they drafted a player at 17 that is a player for the future yeah. instead of an immediate starter for this team? Upset's probably not the word. I'd be surprised, Jamal. I really think, and I've been saying this, when your team is close, and I think they're really close, when your team is on the cusp, and I think they're really on the cusp, you go fill in the spots you need. I think this is more of a need draft than a value draft for them, particularly at the top. So I think the guy they take at 17, they have to expect to play a lot of football, even if there's no injuries. So I would, Anton Harrison, you knew there was a spot for him. It's rare for a team to take a guy that, unless you're just completely full, to take a guy that high that isn't going to play significant plays. So I offensive line at 17, would really surprise me because I think they feel pretty good about where they are there. I really do. So that's a spot that would surprise. In edge, you're going to play him some. Corner, you're going to start him. Wide receiver, he's going to be in the rotation. There's a lot of spots where that guy's going to play. I don't think it's going to be an offensive lineman for the reason you just stated. 
I don't think, barring injury, he played a lot of football in the first year. And I think 17 overall has got to play a lot of football in year one. All right, we'll see how the draft all shakes out. There's 16 teams on the board in front of the Jaguars that will dictate what the Jaguars can do at 17, unless they want to shock everybody and make a trade up. We'll see if that happens. I, I don't really get the feeling that they're going to be in, in the market for a big jump, but we will see what happens on draft day. Crazy things happen every year. Frank, thanks for hanging out with us here on the Sports Zone. We're going to have plenty more draft coverage coming your way on Thursday night live from Everbank Stadium. Our draft coverage will start right here on Channel 4 at 7 p.m. Make sure you tune in. We'll get you ready for everything you need to know before the pick is in and you can also tune in at 8 when the draft starts we're just going to move our coverage over to newsforjacks.com and that news for jacks plus app give you another hour of nothing but jaguars coverage as we get you ready to find out who the jaguars first round pick is if you want more jaguars coverage before then make sure you check out a new episode of the news for jags podcast new episodes come out each week make sure you subscribe anywhere that you get your podcast you can also check it out over on newsforjacks.com just click on that handy dandy sports page